Welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads. I'm your host, Glenn Harding, and tonight's guest is Arthur Lee Walker, one of the elite referees in New York City. And by the way, tonight's program is sponsored by Styles by Nita and Unique Creations. Let's do it. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yes. 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 You have you just stepped out into, into, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Tickets because the game about to start. What's going on, brother? What's going on, man? I, I thought you were scared to come on, man. Nah, I was trying to get my communications right. You know, at first I uh tried to do it on my computer, but nah, that's not a good look. The video won't yeah, yeah, the video, so I had to go to the phone. So right. here right. I am. Yes, yes. What's the deal? What's the deal? What up? What up, Pat? All right. So, um, with all that's going on, man, today and yesterday and the day before that, what's your feelings on that, brother, before we begin to the interview? Um, <clears throat> first and foremost, uh, it's been a long time coming, I believe. Uh, We've seen history repeat itself over and over again when it comes to uh, the plight of black people here in this country. Uh, it's quite evident. It's no secret. It's being televised now more and more than it ever was before. And uh, I know a lot of young folks are fed up. I mean, we've been fed up. I've been fed up for a long time. Uh, but our young folks are extremely fed up because they don't want this to be their future. They already know right. <clears throat> and are aware of things that happened in the past. They are fully aware and plugged into what's happened in the past. And a lot of them are like, no, we're not, we're fighting for it this time. We're not laying down. And in terms of not meaning a physical fight, but more so in the approach that we're not giving up. We're tired of it. And so I clearly understand what's going on. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, no one is doing anything right now. Maybe they're plotting and planning to get something done to stop all of, you know, this. Um, and I mean this meaning the systematic uh, oppression of black folk that's been going on for who knows how long. And uh, we know that that needs to be stopped. And that's why there's chaos right now, because it's a, it's a burning flame that's been, you know, it's continued to, they continue to put fuel on the flame over and over and over again. In this particular scenario, the visual that we just received last week, Monday, with George Floyd and that cop, I wouldn't even call him an officer because an officer, I believe, knows how to conduct himself with class. But that cop, um, it was like uh, a lion who catches his prey and it shows you that I could dominate you and kill you when I want to, however I want to. And that visual right there... Uh, man, it's hard to let go and it's hard to not be extremely angry at this particular time. So I could go on and on about that. Listen, listen. <laughs> yo, yo, you, you, you said enough. Uh, uh, you wrapped it all up. I think uh, you made some valid points. Uh, everything you said was, was on the money. So let's get into the interview, brother. Who introduced <laughs> you to the game? Um, you know, basketball is about timing. 
you know, and my timing was right. I just so happened to be in the neighborhood of Holy Innocence Church. And I was leaving from my friend's house that lived on like East, East 15th Street. I used to hang out over there all the time when I was young. So I was 10 years old and I so happened to be going home. And I walked down East 16th Street and Beverly Road and there's Holy Innocence Church. I saw some young men my age, you know, coming from somewhere, I guess, I guess they were coming from practice or trials. And I said, yo, what y'all doing? What's going on? I just so happened to be inquisitive at the time. And um, somebody was like, uh, I can't remember exactly who told me, but they were like, come back next week at this particular time for tryouts. So I went back the next week for tryouts. I tried out for CYO, um, Holy Innocence team. Uh, my coach was Carlton Screen Sr. Everybody knows Carlton Screen. He is the a legend. legend. The legend. He is a legend here in New York basketball. Um, and it's been an amazing ride ever since I met him. And he was my first coach. And I still carry those same fundamentals that I learned from him. Um, in terms of my approach of the game and uh, in terms of hard work, uh, being professional, being courteous, things of that nature. Um, I'm Flatbush to the heart, you know. Uh, <laughs> I met the same time, uh, Larry Timberlake, everybody know him as Stimuli, that's my brother. Everybody knows that's my brother. There's nothing to be my questioned brother, about that. Uh, so when I, was right. 10, when I was 10, when I was 10, I met, I met Larry. He was uh, on the team. Call and screen seniors. His dad raised him. And uh, I happened to be the same age as, as Larry. And we connected very quickly. And he had already been plugged into the basketball scene because of his dad and because of his older brother caught in Paco screen. And because of the kinship that we formed, he plugged me in too. And I started to travel all over the city playing basketball with him, particularly uptown in Harlem. But uh, we started in CYO at Holy Innocence in Flatbush. And Holy Innocence is the picture where you got the crazy tight shorts to shoot the nice jump shot. <laughs> yeah, you know, that and, was and, back and, in the day. And, listen, that was and, and in that era, in that era, we all had uh, tight shorts. I just took my boy, uh, John Askew, <laughs> my former teammate uh, at Lincoln, with pictures today, and we had the tight shorts on as well. So, yeah, listen, you if know, you made it through that, if you made it in that era, yeah. you definitely know what it's about. Yeah, the tight shorts and the, the Chuck Taylors or the Pro right. Kids, the 69 of Pro Kids, you know, that was what we, we called those shorts Rory Sparrow shorts. You know, Rory Sparrow used to play for the New York Knicks. And, yeah. you know, he had the Crazy. little shorts. Bernard King, they had the little shorts. They could put their hands on their hips. Their hands were so big. They put their hands on their hips. You can't see their shorts no more. That's how little right. the shorts were. So, right. um, yeah, man, I started off back in those days uh, – uh, that was say that was 1981 when I first got involved in basketball. Okay, okay. So, um, did you play junior high school ball? I did. I went to uh, IS 246. Everybody knows it as Walt Whitman and yes, Flatwood. Yeah. Kenny Parker was there as well. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Kenny Parker yeah. was there. Uh, we yeah. got some other former. Um, Artists that went there, Buster Rhymes went there for a, a quick stint. And, of course, my man, shout out to Special Ed. Special Ed is my guy. We was right, in class right. together. Special Ed is my yeah, yeah. So went to Walt Whitman IS246. So I played right. middle school ball there. Um, but my middle school years uh, of playing ball, I played a lot with uh, uh, Vivian June Scarborough. Everybody knows June. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, rest his soul. Everybody knows June. He was my coach. I was fortunate to live a, a few blocks away from him. 
So I was able to really uh, travel a lot with him because I live very close. Right. So, you know, everything that I did when I was younger playing basketball, um, I was with Larry Timberlake. We was everywhere together, uh, except for middle school. So we didn't play middle school together. I played at Whitman. I got to play against uh, – we didn't have that many games. My my school wasn't really that thorough when it came to the basketball team. So we didn't play that many games. So a lot of my time was spent playing for the Gauchos or playing with June. Right. So right. Um, when I played at Whitman, we played against uh, my brother, Rob Phelps, at 275. They called him uh -huh. Black. I was like, yo, this dude is ridiculous. He was, he was bigger than everybody. He was tall. He was intimidating he was imposing and i was like wow okay first you know you go to brownsville it's 275 you know i used to live on rockaway and hegeman when i was young so but i still know the culture of 275 is like they ain't playing around so right. a lot of my teammates were scared and uh yeah man they they smashed us with <laughs> 275 they smashed us and then we played 258 they had uh lawrence bud future who wound up playing that uh, boys and girls went on to play at West Virginia. Form, um, now he's the head coach at Jefferson High School. I played against him in middle school as well. Uh, we didn't have but so many games when I played in middle school at Whitman. So those are the ones that I could tell you about that I remember. <laughs> yeah, but probably that you speak above because his, his name keep coming up in conversations. And I, I, I think I called him today or yesterday just to let him know that. You know what I'm saying? Just like, yo. It's, it's yeah, 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 no question, God, man. You know, remember what you did. Oh, yeah, no question. But Future was good back then when we were in middle school. He was yeah. uh, he was really good. So, But those are the two I, that stand out the most because I still know those guys. You know, Rob and, and Bud Future, we talk about going back to the right. eighth grade. Um, but nonetheless, I did spend more of my time playing for the Gauchos. My first team uptown was the Sun Devils in Harlem. Uh, I played small that's fry. That's, up that's, there. Austin, that's what Austin used to talk about, Sun Devils. The Sun Devils, yeah, man, the Sun Devils. Had a coach named Lamont, coach named Calvin Green up there. Mm -hmm. Barres Um It was during that time in 82, maybe 83. Uh, and Harlem was... It looked like the old pictures, abandoned buildings right, right, everywhere. Right, right, it looked right. like those old pictures. But, you know, the, the Phipps PAL is well known. Everybody knows about the uh, – we had Bubba who was up there. We was fortunate and blessed. They would give us rides home back to Brooklyn. We was like the only guys from Brooklyn that went uptown to play ball at the Sun Devils in terms of the younger guys. All of the older guys on the Sun Devils from Brooklyn, you know, there was a, quite a few from Brooklyn that played on the uh, older team. But we were the young guys there, me and, me and Larry Timberlake. And then we went to Puerto Rico um, when we were young, playing for the Sun Devils, playing small fry, where you had to be five foot one and under. Um, you couldn't be taller than five foot one. You had to fit into this box. If you couldn't fit into the box, you couldn't play. You was too tall because wow. they lowered the rims to seven feet. So, um, yeah, man, we went to Puerto Rico. It was a phenomenal experience to be 11 years old, going to play basketball in Puerto Rico at 11 years old. Man, that's, that was phenomenal, man. And then you saw that, man, guys were good in basketball in so many different places. There was teams from Wisconsin, Chicago, teams from Florida, New Jersey. Teaneck, New Jersey had a team. We had a few teams from um, New York, Bronx River, um, us, the Sun Devils, teams from Florida, somebody I played with in college or who was my buddy in college, Corey Beard, his father, Butch Beard, he played that same year, went to um, Puerto Rico with us. He was playing for a team out of uh, Trenton, New, um, Teaneck, New Jersey. So, uh, yeah. and, and salute to Phil. What up, Phil? What up, Marco? Oh, um, all my brothers. Phil, 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 Phil broke his arm. He missed the trip. <laughs> yeah, Phil. Phil also is one of my brothers that go way back from my my inception in this game. Uh, Phil, 
Larry Timberlake. I mean, these guys, man, we've been around doing this for a long time, man. So my during, during, that, during that time, who was the best player in your neighborhood? Larry Timberlake, man. John Johnson in terms of the older guys who went to Virginia. That's my guy. That's John my guy. John, he was one of my mentors. He went to East 23rd Street. Yeah, he was like, uh, oh, that's John Johnson. Right, right. <laughs> you right. Know, his, grandma, his grandma lived on this side. Yeah, man, John Johnson, who uh, played at UVA mm -hmm, from Flatbush. He had the big-ass hands. Oh, okay. I yeah. probably wouldn't have known. <laughs> I Yo. didn't know about that back then. Yeah, yeah. That, I, I noticed that with him being a, a smaller guy. You know, Ross Jukeman had big hands as well. Well, you know who we idolized as well is was was Paco was caught in screen. I mean, he was um, obviously because we had a close relation to him. We went to all his games and we got exposed to all these great players in New York. All I right, got this. Before, before, Jackson before, playing high school. I know, I know. We're gonna get to that. We're gonna get there. I want to know about STEM. What you want to know about Larry Timberlake Stem? <laughs> what made him the best player in your neighborhood? His handle was crazy. Uh -huh. and, and, and before this, I, I don't know who it was, and I forgot to mention this to Stem. Someone hit me up on, uh, you know, I hate mosquitoes. Someone hit me up online and said that uh, that Stem was very good, you know, and at his age, he could do a lot of things that kids couldn't do. Um, that is very true. When we played at Holy Innocence and we played CYO ball in anywhere we went, but particularly at, at Holy Innocence, man, you know, we didn't score that many points back in those days. We was 10 years old. If the right. score was, if the score was 34 to, to 28, Larry had 32 of the points. I had the other two. <laughs> right, 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 it, was right. my, it was my first time playing ball. You know what I mean? It was my first time playing. But, um, yeah, man, he, he, he dominated when we were young. Man, dominated. His handle was tremendous. He was, he was shorter than everybody, but he, could still, he, he didn't block his shot. He just got to the hole. He had all the moves. He had all the moves he could pass. I mean, I still got the visual in his head when he hit me with a behind the back pass at 10 years old. And I took it in stride, took my one, two and finished at the rim. You know, it was, uh, he was tremendous with the ball, man. Tremendous with the ball. Yeah. Um, he played with me and, and Taylor Dickinson for a year. And what I can say about uh, that year, we had a lot of fun, but STEM scored in every game we played. I mean, in every game that we played, that he got a chance to play in, he scored. It wasn't a game that he got a chance to get in that he didn't put in a bucket or had a few assists. For the time that he played, he kind of filled up the stat sheet, whether it was two or four <laughs> points, two assists, one steal, you know what I'm saying, one rebound. So, yeah. But he would fill it up. It wasn't just like he just was out there just taking up time, you know what I'm saying? He was cut from the cloth. I mean, you know – we played basketball so much. I mean, you know, and obviously he started playing before I did. Right. But, uh, man, his handle, and it never went away, man. His handle was sick. You know, he crossed people up. I see he broke somebody's ankle literally at camp. When we was at BC All-Star Camp, the dude camp was done. Stem hit him with something crazy, crossed him up, did something to it, man. The kid... Man, he broke the kid's ankle for real. The kid had to go home. He was done. He couldn't play at camp no more. This is at a camp when you get trying to get recruited and you right. got somebody that crossed you up like that and you got to go home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, that, that, that's, that's the legend of, of, of him breaking ankles, man. He, he, he did a lot of people dirty back in the days. I'm glad I was his teammate and not playing against him. Mm. So let's, let's, let's move on to uh... – your high school years, right? I know you attended Grady right across the street from from Lincoln. Yeah. Uh, tell me, tell me about your time there. Grady was um, an amazing experience. Um, all my guys that we still family today. We got this 
hashtag G for L, Grady for life, because we learned a lot of the same lessons. We we grew up together. It was a great experience. Um, great coaches, uh, Derek McMahon, Jack Ringle, Vivian June Scarborough, my coaches there. Uh, I started playing JV my freshman year. Uh, my the freshman coach was June. And as I already told you, June had been my coach in just, you know, rec leagues and summer leagues in New York City. I had already been playing with June. So right. going to Grady was an easy transition for me because June was already somebody who coached me. So it kind of was like, I'm not saying he recruited me, but it was kind of like the path to go, to go and play at Grady High School because June was there. So, okay. uh, yeah. Who, who was on your freshman team? My freshman year, I played JV. I started on the JV team at the point guard spot. Myself, Ephraim Whitehead, uh, Jadon Jackson, Jamel Bunch. <laughs> um, uh, who else? Man. You got me reaching right now for names. Nah, nah, that's, 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 that's quite a few um, right now. Man, we had, because... we had my man Michael Grafton from East New York. Uh, we called him Fry. Uh, my man Gus Philemont. Uh, my man Sav <laughs> from East New York. I mean, we was a tough team, man. June was our head coach, man. We was a tough team. And JV didn't play that many games back then you know we might have played up to 12 to 15 games at the most uh okay. so you know but I was still involved with the varsity team I would like because I just wanted to be around and learn and, and gain some knowledge and be around the energy because our varsity team at Grady was sick I mean when I say our varsity team was sick it was sick my freshman year Antoine Lewis, Larell Hendricks, Willie Scurry, Pat Alphonse, uh, Dre Thompson, uh, Sugar Bear, you know, <laughs> Sean Fran aka Sean Francis, Sugar aka Sugar Bear. Um whew. man, what a team. They had a they had did a did, did y'all play U Trick? Uh we did play New U Trick when I was in on J V my freshman year. We played New U Trick. Lincoln, uh, we played uh, Brooklyn Tech. That was the first time I saw Lamont Jones. And Lamont Jones, man, he was like coming at me like he hated me. <laughs> and I was like, yo, I don't even know you, money. Why you? He was coming at me like I, he hated me, man. Le Lamont Jones came at me, came for me, man. We, we, uh, we only played Brooklyn Tech one time, I believe. I don't, you know, it's, it's sketchy right now. I can't remember all of that, but I think we played Brooklyn Tech one time, man. Lamont Jones went at me so hard, and uh, yeah, man, that that was a uh, that was a good season, though. We played Springfield Gardens High School. I remember that. We had a good team. We had a really good team. My JV year. Yeah, that that question was asked by Marco. Um, so get into high school. JV, y'all stacked on varsity. How did you guys do that year? Well, in those uh, my, J, my JV team, we did well. I'd say we was probably about uh, 10 and 5 or 12 and 3. I'm not sure. But, you know, during that same time, um, Glenn, you know, I was also playing for the Gauchos. So, you know, prior, even prior to going to high school, uh, I played for the Gauchos, and right. uh, that was a big, big, big deal for me coming from Brooklyn, going uptown and making the Gauchos and playing on the team that I played with so many great players, pros who wound up being pros and all-stars and big-time Division One basketball players. The Gauchos was – this was before the Gaucho gym in the Bronx when we practiced on the right, 100 right, right, right. Uh, right. Yeah, man, that was a big deal for me. My coach, uh, you know, Dave McCullough, who I spoke to some point last year, we just chopped it up, and, you know, it was good to speak to him after so many years. So um, 
you know, my freshman year. You know what I noticed? I broke you, know my arm. Noticed? you know what I noticed? That uh, a lot of the guys from Grady, you know, were from across town, right? Even though the school was out in the Coney Island area. Uh, a lot of the guys from Coney Island went to Lincoln. Not saying that Grady didn't have any people from Coney Island, but most of the guys who were on the basketball team, and that was very nice and influential, was from across town. Pat and I discussed yeah. that the other day. Why you think yeah. that's so? Well, Grady was a, a vocational technical high school, and it had open enrollment. So you didn't – it wasn't no zone. Anybody could come right. from all over the city. So okay. Okay. I'm sure that had something to do with it. Right. Because to get it to Lincoln from across town, I, I know, especially when I was there, you had to take up animal science. That was the thing. <laughs> animal science. Now, nah, we had we had carpentry. We had uh, automotive. We had appliance right. repair, things like that, electrical. Uh, we had things of that nature at Grady that, you know, once again, open enrollment. So there were players like Andre Thompson, who was on the, on the on varsity team my freshman year. He He's from Harlem. Oh, OK. What up, what up, what up, Smooth? My man John Askew on the building. Yeah. So you move up to high school, you move up to varsity, right? Mm -hmm. How's the transition from JV to varsity? And what are some things that you had to learn? Right, the difference between the two. Man, you let me let me tell you, man, it wasn't easy for me to make varsity my sophomore year. So Grady, you know, we're talking about Grady back in traditionally when Grady was always tough every year. We were a powerhouse in the PSAL in this in Brooklyn every year. We were very, very competitive. And I made the varsity team my sophomore year. And it was tough. I battled and I'm, I made the team and it was a huge transition because, you know, you're talking about guys are bigger in varsity. Uh, you got to kind of wait your turn, you know, and that turn might not happen, but you still got to be positive. You got to, you got to work hard in practice. You know, we talking about Grady where there's no chumps and so it's not going to be easy to get on the court. So you got to really work hard. And um, the, I, I realized I had to, to do something. So defense and, and, and just, you know, using my intellect was going to get me some opportunities to play my sophomore year. And then some luck also got me on the court. Okay, okay. Fair enough, fair enough. Who was your toughest competition when you was in practice? <laughs> when I was in practice, it was always Ephraim Whitehead, man. Ephraim Whitehead was always my toughest competition because I always had to guard E Dog. I always had to guard him. I don't know why. And I'm sure, you know, I helped make him better <laughs> because I ain't going front. I had to go at him. And I had to guard him all the time, man. And Ephraim was way taller than me. You know, he's 6'5", I'm 6'1", taller than me. And, you know, sometimes he posts me up. And when I realized that I, he was he was right-handed and not left-handed, <laughs> which was confusing because he would go left all the time. Right, all his moves right, to the right. left. He'd pass you off the dribble with his left. He he did all kinds of things with his left. He'd get to the hole, lay you with his left, dunk on you with the left. And, uh, you know... He pushed me and practiced hard, man. He had long arms guarding me. I mean, it's, it was tough, man. Ephraim Whitehead, man. But, you know, I had I had guys that was tough on me my sophomore year because I was the rookie. You know, it was several right. of us. It was myself, Lou Johnson, um, Ephraim Lou, Whitehead, Lou. Right. and Jamal Phillips. We were the rookies on the team. So me, Ephraim, and Lou were sophomores. Jamal Phillips was a freshman. And that team was led by Pat Alphonse, you know. P Pat Funk. was our senior. Yeah, P Funk. He was our senior, and uh, yeah, it was P Funk show, man. <laughs> That's the bottom line. It was Patrick Alphonse's show. So, so when did you come into your own as a player? Um, I had some moments my sophomore year. Uh, I got some opportunities, and. 
I had some pretty good games, and it was mostly toward the end of the season. Um, during the playoffs, surprisingly, in the playoffs. Uh, man, we had some games, and I got opportunity uh, against Westinghouse. I started. And, no, I didn't start. I came in in, in crucial time, and I played well, and I stayed in the game. And I never, and then I didn't come out playing against um, Magic McFadden in Westinghouse. Magic you trying to bully you, right? You trying to bully yeah, you, right? Magic, Oh, yeah, Magic McFadden was intimidating. He had the gold teeth, you know what I'm saying? Like the mouth full, you know, from Westerhouse. And here I am, like nobody knows me, you know what I'm saying? And I get right. my opportunity, and I played really well that game. Um, matter of fact, I did start that game. I'm sorry. I did start. I just didn't remember. But I did start that game because somebody went out. But you got to be ready. That's the thing about right. basketball. You never know when your opportunities come, and you got to be ready when that opportunity does come. So right. um, somebody else went down or whatever, and then I got to start and nod uh, in that game. But, you know, another game before that, I hit a game winner. So I had some things against Tilden. I hit a game winner. Patrick Alphonse knows about that game. That's legendary mm -hmm. when Patrick Alphonse went off for, like, 20 points in the fourth quarter to bring us back to beat. Till then, after they was stomping us, and Pat was like, "Man, uh, uh, not in my backyard." You know, he from over there in the '90s where Tilden is at East Flatbush, and he wasn't trying to go back around the way with a loss to Tilden. Uh, uh, he wasn't having that. Coach took everybody out, all the players, the starters, and he put in us guys off the bench, and we proceeded to play some tough defense. And we came back from an 18-point deficit. And Pat, like I said, he scored. If we scored 22 points, he scored 22. If we scored 24 points, he scored 22 of the 24. I scored the other two. I hit the game winning shot. So, who passed you know, me I the had ball? A, who passed me the ball? Yeah. Patrick Alphonse. <laughs> Patrick Alphonse, he passed me the ball, man. Yeah, man, I got my Steve Kerr on. You know, right, right. That's right. That's I got right. My, I got my Steve Kerr on your Pat, man. Your P Funk. Thanks for that pass, man. My one game winner in high school. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, man. So um I had some moments my sophomore year. And, and and your junior year comes along. What did you do to prepare yourself for your junior year? My junior year, the summer before my junior year is when I started going to camp. Um, BC All-Star Camp and obviously I was playing all over the city in the summertime playing in citywide playing in <clears throat> whatever tournament was you know popping that my team played with uh, and me and me and me and Larry once again stem we we just was always balling man and playing in the park which is underrated nowadays but just playing in the park, I mean, in Caton Park, everybody knows it, parade grounds, Caton Park. Uh, man, we had some ball players there, and we battled, and we go, we went hard in that park. We went hard. You, you, you earned toughness. You, you had to earn your your respect. You had to earn your spot on the court. And uh, I put a lot of, uh, I put a lot of time out there playing basketball. And, and getting myself mentally tough and, and ready to go play at Grady on, on top of. So I did it all. It wasn't like I just played on the team. You know, growing up in that era, you had to play in the park. You couldn't just go play for a team. You had to play in the park. So yeah. uh, it was a combination of all these different things that, you know, got you ready to play high school basketball. Um, so don't underestimate playing in the park. That it was a huge component to guys, you know, getting their weight up in the game. Yeah, I think it's a big advantage when you can play against older guys and learn some veteranship, right? You learn how to play. You learn a little, a little uh, patience. Yeah, game is a lot different. You, you learn how to, to move at the fast pace, but we do that automatically being younger guys. But you really learn how to figure out the game, whereas if you're not playing with older guys, you're kind of picking up the same 
methods of, you know, of playing. Whereas the older guys, they're showing you how to cut. These guys are setting screens and they're doing a lot of things that you're actually going to do when you get older or when you get to the high, the high school level or college level. So I think the, yeah. the playground basketball and playing in the park uh, is a huge advantage for kids if they take advantage of it the right way. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, <clears throat> it, just, it doesn't happen as much today. But back then, because that was an outlet, you know, you had to be tough. If the older guys wasn't playing, elbowing you, you know, housing your necks. You remember you come to the park, try to get necks. If you wasn't official, who got necks? Oh, uh, right. you? Nah, man, you don't got necks, man. Somebody house right. your neck. You know, you learn to be tough there, too. You know what I'm saying? People house your necks. If you wasn't good, you might not get on the court. You had to go play on the other court. You know what I'm saying? It just was one of those things where, you know, either you wanted to get out there and you was going to get tough to get out there and get your game, get your weight up, or you wasn't going to get on the court. Facts. Facts. So what, what summer league did you say you started to get a little reputation? Like, and guys, you know, really sought after you to be on their teams otherwise. Well, you know, it, it never really worked out like that for me. You know, I earned everything I did through trying out for teams. And then, um, you know, once again, I was blessed to be in an organization where I was just on the team, which was playing with June. We played everywhere. You know, and me and me and Larry was the backcourt. We played everywhere together. So playing during that time, uh, you know, <clears throat> I was fortunate enough. But when I went to the Gauchos, that was a different story. You know, I had to really, I had to try out. And that's when I kind of realized, man, you know, I, I'm not so bad. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're young, you know, you, man, I, I made the team. I'm playing with Jamal Mashburn, Sharnell Scott. <laughs> um <laughs> Anthony Peel, who he played at uh, uh, Villanova, uh, I, you know, Ty Davis, who, you know, my man Ty Davis from Brooklyn, who played at Boys and Girls High School, who wound up being Division II All-American out in California, Bakersfield. Um, man, David Kane, who played at St. John's. Uh, Pat said, Pat said uh, Los Carlos Easterland. Carlos Easterland? Yes. About what? He, no, he said he was good, too. Oh, from Flatbush, for sure. Christ the King, Rhode Island, Carlos Easterling, you know, the smile, you know, the charisma. Everybody knows, you know, he, 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 he do a good move. He pat himself on the back. You know what I mean? Carlos Easterling, shout out to him, man. That's my guy. So let's talk about the city championship run. Mm-hmm. Right? Because, you know, your, your junior year came. You guys did uh, pretty well. Uh, what year did you guys win the uh, state championship? Man, we won the state championship my senior year. I'd say my junior year was in flux, man. My junior year was up and down. We 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 actually were, weren't as good as we should have been our, my junior year. Man, my junior year, we just was trying to really, you know, find ourselves. Um and it just wasn't a productive season, per se, um, in right. terms of wins. We made the playoffs. Uh, we, you know, moved on to a few rounds in the playoffs, but we just didn't have it like we should have. And the summer before my senior year, that's when everybody knew, uh-oh, this Grady team, they're going to be a problem. Because right. that summer, we put in work. Summer 89, we put in some serious work. All right, who won it, who won it to junior year? Uh, the city championship? <laughs> um, I'm not sure who won the city championship my junior year in the PSL. It might have been, might have been Lincoln. I'm not sure. Okay, all right. I just want to know. Oh, shit. <laughs> I think it was Lincoln. I think Lincoln won my, my junior year. I'm okay, not sure right. with Norman, with Norman Marbury. Okay. And, I, and, and, you know, I forgot to mention that Norman Juju Marbury was one of my guys that also went when we played for the Sunday when I won a 
you know, track backtrack to when we were playing, when I first started playing Uptown in Harlem. Norman, Juju, Marbury, me, and Larry Timberlake, we was Uptown all the time playing for the Sun Devils. We traveled together on the train. You know, Juju is my guy who played at Lincoln, man. That's my brother. So I want everybody to do me a favor, right? Juju is on Instagram. I need everyone to blitz his DM and let him know he need to come on the show. Juju's my guy, right? Known for a very long yeah, time. Yeah, we're gonna try. We're, we're trying to get Juju on the show for you, man. We're trying um, to get Juju on the show for you. Them said I was the reason they lost in 1990. What happened? <laughs> oh my God! Oh, uh, he. You know, he's asking the question about um. Well, he's talking about uh, Doc Turner tournament. So our senior year, once again, we had a phenomenal team my senior year. We went 27 and 1. Uh, we have. Oh, so somebody, excuse me. Somebody says Stevenson won in 89. Oh, Stevenson. Yes. Yeah, they might have. They had a good team. They had David Kane. Right. They had uh, Big Aunt Pell, I think. I, no, I think he went to Stevenson also. Billy, Billy Singleton. Sure. No, no, Billy Singleton and um, David King. Right. <laughs> I got people trying to feed me information. <laughs> all in the video, all in the yeah. song. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, um, exactly. You know, right, some so details are sketchy. We're, we're, we're in your senior year, right? Mm hmm. So what's going on in your senior year? Well, like I said, but the summer before my senior year, we all had a productive summer. And the, 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 whole, the whole team, we really did well on the summer circuit. We did well in camps. Um, and we were ready. Um, we were together. We were a real team, man. I mean, when I tell you we hung out together, we hung out together, we did, you know, we had – Everything we did, we did together, man. We did a lot of things. We were brothers, for real. We were always together. We had a room in Grady where we could hang out. <laughs> where we could hang out and, you know, get a haircut. And we had TV and then VCR. We could watch videos and things of that nature. You know, we had, we had a little extra privilege, you know, that year um, because we just were a really phenomenal team. And we proved ourselves that we were um, we were worthy of everything that we did, we we earned that year. We had one loss uh, the whole year. One loss the whole year. Twenty seven and one. We finished. We finished twenty seven and one. We were the um, we were number five in the country when we finished the season as well in the USA Today. Uh, first team from Brooklyn to win the state championship, I believe, in like 20 years or so when we did win that. Um, yeah, that's, that's one thing that that's one thing y'all 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 have over us, right? That y'all won the state <laughs> championship before us, right? And, and I was telling Pat, um, well, I'm not gonna let off the bag, but I, I'm just saying y'all need your own documentary, right? Um, and and if I would name it, right? Just on some bullshit, uh, I would name it the school around the corner from Lincoln. <laughs> we always got to be a part of it, man. <laughs> you know, you know that, you know that ain't gonna fly. You know that ain't gonna fly. We, we don't get down like that. We Falcons, baby. We don't get down like that. Everybody know Yo, all, my great, you know. all my Grady heads on the know. line. They know what it is. Ah, ah, ah. That's what was our little call we did at Grady. Everybody knows, no man. No smoke. No smoke. That, that won't be. That won't they don't call it the school, the school around the corner from Lincoln. Nah, that nah, won't happen. But, that, on a serious note, I, I, I always respected you guys coming from Grady, right? Because yeah. even though we had one of the best rivalries in New York City history, a lot of us got along. All of us got kind of got along. A lot of us are friends. Have been friends for over thirty years, um, mm -hmm. and that came through us competing against each other and respecting each other's craft. So, salute to all my Grady people out there, man. 
Oh yeah, no question, man. It was a lot of love, man. Yeah. Who did y'all beat in the state championship? We beat uh, Hempstead High School in the state championship. They had a guy that named Kyle Ivy Jones. We beat them. Uh, we beat Jamal Mashburn in um, All Hollows uptown, um, up upstate to to go to the um, final game. So, yeah, Hempstead. Okay. We beat them okay. in the state championship. But my senior year, yo. Uh, <laughs> Our, our biggest thing was beating beating Lincoln, you know, initially. Even though we had bigger fish to fry, beating Lincoln was on the top of our list. And when we went to Lincoln uh, in that first game, and we beat them by 20 points at their house, mm. y'all, I'm going to say you because you're a rail splitter. When we beat y'all by 20 points, my senior year, the first game, and it came it came right after our only loss. So our only loss was the Bishop Lachlan in the Doc Turner tournament. And we we lost to them in overtime. And then we played Lincoln and we stomped them by 20, man. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. I hadn't we had when, 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 when Lincoln came to our house, we beat him again by 20. All right, so we, we want to move on, right? Listen, man, we stomped <laughs> everybody. Listen, man, I'm, I'm, and just, we stomped everybody our senior year. Everybody on this feed that went to Grady knows that. We stomped everybody except for that one loss against Lincoln. I mean, against Lachlan, pardon me. Um, but we stomped everybody, man. We we were good. We, we, we didn't play no games. We played man-to-man -man offense. I mean, we played man-to-man -man defense all game. All game, we never played a zone. We was in great shape. When I tell you the shape we were in, it was phenomenal. The shape we were in, we we played man to man defense all game. Mm mm mm, that's crazy. So look, who's who's looking at you around this time? Any schools looking at you? Yo, listen. <clears throat> I was one of those guys that was uh, I, I received the academic awards. OK, uh, when we would do anything, I was the one of the guys that me and Mike Bond, we would lock up the academic awards. And uh, James Hector, who was uh, first team all city. Right. Was getting recruited heavily by American International College in Springfield, Massachusetts. So they caught wind of me as well. And uh, they invited me up to come for a visit. So I went to uh, American International College for a visit. You know, and I'm going to be 1,000 with you. Going to college was everything to me. And that's all I cared about. Was like, I got to get out of the hood and I got to go to college. I got to see what this is all about. I got to go get further my education. And of course, I wanted to play ball in college right. as well. But I just really wanted to go because what else was you going to, I going to do? I wasn't going to just, you know, stay around the way and not go to school. Like, so my coach, Jack Ringle, that is one of the things that they did at Grady. Everybody goes to college. Everybody goes to college. It wasn't no game, man. He he made it happen. And so I went for my visit to American International College. I already knew that two of my other teammates, we were going to all go there together. So it was like a, a package deal. Myself, James Hector, and Cleon Williams, we all went to American International in Springfield, Massachusetts, uh, played in high-level Division II basketball uh, up in the NE10. Um, yeah, so that's who uh, I wanted to, to play with. Let's go back a little bit. Who was all city on, on that Grady team? Uh, everybody. <laughs> everybody from – First, second, and third team. And it was somebody from Grady on on all those teams. Everybody. First, second, and third team. You know, the starting five. The starting five 
from my high my senior year, we made everybody made one of the the uh, all city teams, first, second, or third. Wow. So how was your time up in American U? American International was American man, International, was, yeah. Yeah, American International in Springfield, Massachusetts, where the Basketball Hall of Fame is. It, my freshman year, uh, you know, you go go to college, you, you get away, um, and it's a great experience. But for me, you know, I I was trying to get some playing time. I was like, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna earn me some playing time. And when I saw the guards there, I was like, uh, they short. I'm going to get me some playing time. <laughs> but I didn't know how strong you had to be to play college basketball. <laughs> the strength factor was a different, you know, it was a different level, you know what I'm saying? Being under that iron, pushing weight and being strong. So uh, I had some things to work on. And I realized that I had some things that I needed to work on. And I started to work on them and get stronger. Um, but when it comes to, uh, you know, that aspect, my freshman year, I had to sit and learn. I had uh, Orlando Vandross, who played, probably played against you up in uh, prep school. He played at Brewster Academy. Okay, uh, Orlando, yeah, yeah. Orlando yeah. Vandross. Uh, he was a junior. And Steve Valdez, who played out of St. He came out of St. John's Prep in Queens. He played there. And they had started from their freshman year. Right. And they were juniors. So here I come in as a freshman. I was, you know, I had to get whatever time I could. So, but I had a decent freshman year. Um, it was cool. Um, I got stronger. I learned a lot. That's when I first started learning how to shoot the ball better, man. I had a coach named Andy up there, and I said, Andy, please teach me how to shoot. Right. And uh, he started teaching me how to shoot because, you know, coming in, out of New York, man, we used to get to the hole, get to the cup. And, um, you know, my jump shot wasn't great at all. And then yeah, um, the I remember you year, coming up to Philly Dickinson and, and talking about wanting to improve your jump shot. I remember those yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. You know, my senior year in high school, I was in Philly Dickinson with you. <laughs> you know, coming to watch your games. Right. You know what I mean? You know, hanging out with you, spending the whole weekend up at Philly. You know that. So right. I was getting my taste of college life. So I knew that I wanted it for myself. So going to college was a huge deal for me. I definitely knew that I wanted to go play college basketball. So cool, cool. So let's let's come back with uh, you know, part two. Everybody come back to the room. All right, time's about to run out. All right, we'll come right back. Okay, no problem. Come right back. Yes, sir.